Hello everybody, how are you this Friday lunchtime UK time? My name is Carl, welcome to this webinar about how to market yourself as an online teacher. Here with us at the TEFL Orc, every Friday, usually on Friday, we do uh, some sort of question and answer live session for anybody that wants to watch it. And we've covered lots of topics over the last few months and today's topic is how to market yourself as an online teacher. So this is a live question and answer Q&A webinar. So if you've got any questions at all about how to TEFL, basically, do you have any questions on sort of specific parts of teaching? Please put it in the chat. If you've got any questions about how to become a TEFL teacher, please put it in the chat. Um, please tell me where you are in the world. I can see some people already commenting. Thank you very much. I'm here in Belfast in Northern Ireland where I work as a teacher trainer and I work as an online examiner. Um, I also do live, um, sorry, I do uh, online teaching with people. Uh, I've got my own website and things like this where I find my own students. They come to me and I teach them. I do the practical courses for TEFL Org here as a tutor as well so if you're going to do if you're in northern ireland or in the republic of ireland and you want to do some sort of um uh practical course of us you might get to spend the weekend with me so hello john hello diane hello my english bubble that's an interesting name he's in moscow um thank you all for joining us any questions please put them in the chat so let's get started how to market yourself as an online teacher. So I've been um, working as an online teacher for about seven years now, six, probably six and a half years. Um, and in that time, it's, it's gone pretty well. It was a slow start, but I have built myself up to getting a good amount of uh, students coming through as online students. And I enjoy doing it. And I'm going to talk a little bit about the marketing that I know. Now, there are different ways of doing it, marketing, for sure. But I'm going to talk a little bit about sort of my um, opinions on it and some of the things that I've sort of learnt as I've gone over the last few years. Hello, everybody. I will get around to you in a second. Any questions, though, please put them in the chat. So why, as a TEFL teacher, do you need to learn marketing? Now, for the majority of people, who probably aren't tuning in this webinar because it's not relevant, you don't really need to learn marketing in order to be a TEFL teacher. What you're basically, what we're basically aiming at with this uh, video is to sort of talk about to anyone who wants to work online long term. So if you want to have your own business as an online TEFL teacher, you've got to be able to obviously teach, but I think, and here at TEFL Org, we also think that you need to have a bit of marketing knowledge to get yourself out there because the students aren't just going to come to you if you've got a TEFL certificate. You have to go and sort of find them as well. OK, so why did I want to become an online teacher? Um, basically, the number one thing for me was control. I wanted to not really work for a company. I didn't. I wanted to um, sort of control the hours that I work. Uh, I also wanted to sort of control the types of students I have um, and the type of the different types of things that I was teaching. For example, I taught kids all around the world. I've taught kids in Vietnam, uh, Azerbaijan, Sri Lanka, Japan, lots of places all around the world. I don't overly enjoy, however, teaching kids. And a lot of the online jobs are teaching kids. And that's fine. People might like that. I myself didn't really like that. I wanted to be able to control who I taught by teaching adults, basically. The other reason why I wanted to become an online teacher for myself, running my own business, was basically for money. Uh, you can go work for companies and I still do work for companies. My only online teaching isn't my only job. I go and work for companies as well. I enjoy working for companies, but the most lucrative money I have coming in is for my own students that I've found myself that have come through my website who I found online, social media, this kind of thing. I get paid more for doing it. It's generally not bad money. OK. The other time, the other reason why I want to work I, uh, online and I recommend that people might want to do this is because it reduces your prep time. So if if you have the same sort of classes that you teach over and over again, 
you might not have to prep for them every time. You might sort of spend 10 minutes doing it. But if you're not, if you're um, working for a company, you might have more prep time. Whereas if you're, you work for yourself, you have less prep time. You get more time to actually teach. You get more time in the classroom. That way you can make a bit more cash, spend more time with students. So if you can do any, if this is any, this is sort of interesting to you. You've got to learn marketing in order to get this. Okay. The final thing that I, I think is I, I found it quite interesting. It was a different type of aspect for me, something that I didn't really know much about before I was going to become a teacher. Um, and I feel like I've learned a bit more about the business, about my students, and just sort of generally about how the world works a bit. So that's what sort of, if you want any of these things, learning marketing is important, okay? So the first thing you need to do is find a niche. Now, what do I mean by niche? I mean a part of English that you can teach a lot of and that you think could be good for you and importantly that you can get students in. So uh, finding the niche is key, I think, to being a good online teacher and for then because your marketing then comes from this niche. So my niche is I have an, a website where I teach I advertise myself as a teacher for one of the well-known English as a foreign language exams. Now, I'm not going to tell you my website. Why? Because if I put it in the chat, someone will copy it. It's happened before. I don't want it to happen again. You have to find your niche. Now, exams are good. You've got business English. You've got kids. You've got academic English. You've got English for a specific purpose. You've got general English. You've got the skills within all of those. You've got high levels. You've got low levels. You've got ages within uh, the, the young learners. Lots of different niches that you can have. Finding a niche is key. Think about what do you enjoy teaching? What would you like to teach as for as many hours as you can? Okay. Teaching kids, for me, no thank you. Teaching exams, teaching writing skills, teaching academic English skills, I like that. I'm happy to teach that. So think about what do you enjoy teaching, okay? Uh, and then you think, okay, well, I this is what I want to teach. Then you got to think, who would pay for that? Is it going to be them? Is it going to be their business? Is it going to be the parents? Who is the ones that are actually going to have to put through the money transaction, okay? They're the people who you're marketing to, really. And what benefit would they get? Because if you've got a good niche that you think you would enjoy, that you think there's a market for, then you need to advertise as the benefit. So if they do this, will their job improve? If they do this, can they have better confidence? If they do this, can they pass their master's degree? Whatever it might be, okay, whatever it might be, wh what benefit do they get? Think about this as you do your niche. Because if you've got a niche and no one wants it, if you've got a niche that no one will pay for, it's pointless. You're not going to make any money. Is there a lot of competition? So go on Google, go on Facebook, go on uh, other search engines as well, okay, and see, is there a lot of people doing that niche because if there is it's going to be difficult for you to market because you've got a lot of competition they may be quite well established they might have a bigger advertising budget for you can you narrow down that niche even more so if you're doing an exam instead of teaching the whole exam can you teach one of the skills instead of teaching one of the, instead of teaching just that skill can you teach that skill aimed at a specific nationality can you get that skill aimed at a certain level okay is there a lot of competition is there a lot of competition for it okay um and you got to think who who will want to do it there are parts of the world where they don't have a huge amount of money if if you market to them are they going to be able to pay you enough for you to be happy okay the niche has to work for countries and people unfortunately with money and your marketing needs to focus on that okay if you have been doing this, and I can see some people have put some niches in there. Uh, grammar and pronunciation, Rani. Vicky, confidence, pronunciation and business, particularly legal. You've got a few there. Interesting. 
all those are, are are really good and they might work they work work really well i hope they do work really well but um if you've got a niche please put it in the chat so we can i can discuss it a little bit and know a bit more about what you're teaching then what you need to do is market around your niche do your marketing around your niche okay so first thing you need to do is find a website domain I think this is key. Now, I have spoken to teachers that don't have their own website. Fine. I, my website works for me. I've got uh, I went on um, uh, a, a GoDaddy, I think it was. I bought the website domain. I learned WordPress and all my marketing revolves around my website. I know people that only do it through social media. Fine. Well done if that works for you. But for me, going through a website, building a website and marketing all around that website, having my niche inside the website name has worked for me. OK, then you've got to make the social media pages that go around it. So you've got to have a Facebook um, page. You've got to have then you have Facebook groups. Why do you have groups? Because groups tend to get people discussing it more than just the page. Page is sort of seen as an advert advertising. Yes, there could be a bit of chat in the comments underneath, but if you've got groups, people get talking to each other more in it. You can get a bit more involved. It's a bit more personal than just the page. So you've got to have, I think, both of them going at the same time. All right. With your niche in, with your niche's name in, with um, links to the website, all that kind of thing. YouTube pages, get everything linked together. OK, Instagram has also worked for me now, not as well as Facebook has. Maybe that's my generation. I, I grew up on Facebook. I'm in my 40s. Maybe younger people are more into Instagram and then are more into um, maybe TikTok now. I've, got, I've never logged into TikTok. I've got no idea what it works, how it works. But for me, Instagram or Facebook ones are the big one. OK, I do have a YouTube page. The reason why I don't use it so much myself for me is because it takes a while for me to make the videos. I'm just not that good at it. However, I know people as well that use YouTube really well and they get even and that comes in as an income stream as well from them. OK, not a huge one, but, you know, as an income stream, you've got to have these things to drive, I think, people towards your website and then you get the money and you get the bookings, you get all that kind of thing on there. Now, obviously, you've got to have helpful and interesting posts. OK, so. The ones that have worked for me are ones where I have given advice in the Facebook posts. I've said, look, here is a free tip. Here is a lesson. Here is a video, something like that, which actually is giving them something for free. Also, the ones that have worked for me is when I've asked like questions where I've got them a bit more involved. OK, this is the sort of thing that has worked for me. Maybe hopefully I think it will work for you get in giving the people that read your page, giving the people that read your groups help. Free help has worked. OK, then drive people to your website, offer deals on your website. So I started off by offering many years ago, I started offering free trial lessons. I would give 20 minutes, half an hour, free lesson to students where I would give them a tiny bit of help, not too much. I'd give them a tiny bit of help and let them know that I can do what I can do really well. OK, they would then hopefully book up for repeat lessons. Some didn't, but repeat lessons until eventually I started charging for that trial lesson. I charged them a fiver for that trial lesson. People would pay that because they could see I had a lot of followers on Facebook. They could see that I was helping them out a bit. The word of mouth got around that kind of thing. Now, when you start, you're not going to have any. Any big numbers within these groups, I know that you've got to be able to work at it. You if you've got an advertising budget, go down it. I'm going to talk about that in a minute, but it's going to take it's going to be slow and steady, but start driving people towards your website. It will work out. It takes time. OK, that's the only thing you need to learn search engine optimization if you're going to go down the website route, which is what I have done. I find it quite interesting. I enjoyed learning about it. What is search engine optimization? It's basically making sure that your website gets towards the top of a um, get towards the top of a the search engine results. OK, now here is where your niche helps. OK, having your niche does really help you there to get your uh, search engine up. Now, um, one of the things that can help you is a Chrome widget 
and I, it's called Content Aced. This is the website. I've put it all there in one word because contentace.com is a good widget that will help you. Now, let me just see if I can give you an example of what this web widget does. Okay, so um, I'm just going to, let's see, did that come up? Yes, there is Google there. Let me zoom in a bit there. Okay, I'm just zooming in. So if I say there, learn English. Now, I have this content aced website um, uh, on, on my website, OK, on my Google Chrome. OK, now you see down here, it gives you statistics. This is something that will come up that will give you statistics about how often it is searched for. Now, really get this download it content aced put it in your website because it will also give you things like related keywords these are the keywords that you need to sort of search for in order to improve your search engine optimization let me just scroll in a bit more there there you go so a lot of people would search these terms this is what you need to put into your search engine optimization to help it okay gives you some more like some more things here about what people also search for then at the top here it tells you how difficult it is for you to get to the top of the search engine at the moment so learn english uh yeah learn english is what i put into google it's one of the more difficult things the higher the number the more difficult thing it would be to get your website up however so my, if i'm marketing myself as the learn english teacher it's going to be difficult 79 out of 100 however if I put something in there like improve, um, improve my Cambridge speaking, something like that. OK, you look here, is which is slightly more narrower. It's an easier search engine optimization score. The score is lower. It's going to be more easy for you. It's going to be easier for you to become a good teacher with that. Now, I've just really brushed through that, but I really recommend that you go down something like content aced. Find your niche, do all that, then look at this content aced, put it in Google. It will help you to see are people searching for your niche? What exact words are they doing? This will help you with your search engine optimization. OK, um, then get the meta tags right. What are meta tags? These are the things within your website that Google and other search engines look at in order to rank it. Lots of videos on YouTube to help you with this. Get that right. Update it regularly. Don't just build it once, then leave it. You got to keep adding things. Now, you can do this automatically through things that might link to your social media, but also adding pages is also good. Then get your website mentioned on other sites so get it mentioned on facebook for example get it mentioned on some blogs see if you can get it on something like the british council website which is known for learning english get this kind of thing going get it mentioned that helps your search engine optimization that helps your um uh, website get up there that will help your niche that will get you money now all of this is free you don't have to do this. there are plenty of youtube websites that will help you however you do will need to pay for your hosting and you will need to pay for the domain name. Make sure the headings work. Google looks at the headings, the paragraph headings within a website. Do they link to your keywords that you found through that content aced? OK, and get your website accessible. That means get it so, uh, it, for example, the, the pictures have a description with them. Google, that kind of thing, loves it. This will help you to optimize your website, help you to get higher up the rankings. It will help you to get money coming in. Trust me, it'll work. Might take a while. OK, I can see some questions coming in. I'm definitely going to get around to them in a minute. OK, definitely. Uh, then the other thing you need to think about is maybe you don't want to market yourself to the whole world as an online teacher. Maybe, and I have taught locally face to face. So I've marketed myself as a local teacher. I have got some, I've had some lovely lessons out of it. COVID has stopped it, but well, yeah, it has stopped it. I haven't had any for a little while, but before that I was getting lots of um, local students who lived near me in Northern Ireland where I was teaching them. OK, not in through a company, anything like that. So market yourself locally at the same time I would if I was you. OK, so 
Look for groups of non-native speakers in your local town wanting to learn. So look on Facebook groups. You're, for example, in, in uh, Northern Ireland, in Belfast, there's a group called Italians in Belfast. I've, I'm in there, I'm talking to them, I've got students through that where I've met them face to face or I've taught them remotely, okay? Uh, but they're all local to me and they feel a bit happier giving money to someone who's local instead of someone who's not local. So think locally as well. Now, if you're in a rural little village, difficult. However, if you're in any big city anywhere in the world, not just an English speaking country, for example, if you're in Colombo, I lived in Sri Lanka for a bit. If you're in Colombo, first language generally isn't English. For some people it is, but generally it's not English. Advertise yourself locally. Look for groups locally and look at the sort of places that they might hang out. Universities, colleges, that sort of thing. Put some po posters up in bars. Get on something like a language exchange. Do local as well. Social media is important. So Facebook groups, as I spoke about. Twitter. You'd be surprised at how many comments you see on questions. Does anybody know a local teacher in Belfast? Happens quite a lot in Twitter, okay? Go on that. Put posters, put A4 pictures up with your name, with your website address, with your email, whatever it might be, up in local colleges, up in local universities, word of mouth, get them involved in that, okay? You'll get students that come through it, I promise you, okay? Don't just think you're gonna be online only. Also think locally, okay? Some of my final thoughts around uh, marketing, okay? And some lovely questions there. I'm gonna definitely get some in it, but some of my final thoughts about um, marketing, okay? It takes a while. I'm not gonna lie to you. You're not gonna be up and running with a full workload of students quickly. If you see Facebook ads and I get targeted by Facebook ads all the time saying you can make a hundred thousand pounds a year if you set yourself up as an online teacher if you just pay for my course no you're not gonna you're a teacher at the end of the day <laughs> teachers generally now there are big influencers i hate that word influencers out there influencers out there that might make a hundred grand a year i think you're very 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 rare okay it takes a while to get yourself up and going so I would do it alongside other work if I was you. I wouldn't just say, right, well, I'm gonna, now you might have lots of money in the bank, good luck to you, but I have always done it alongside other work, okay? I've not just done it myself. I probably could now, after six or seven years, go full-time being an online teacher, but I've not. I've done it alongside working for other companies, working physically in colleges, that kind of thing. I prefer that. I don't want to be stuck to this screen the whole time. Then if you if you are going to start doing this, keep at it. Keep it up. OK, adjust your marketing. Look at what works. Look at what doesn't work. OK, don't just think right. Don't just set it up and then just leave it. You've got to look at some of the statistics on the Google um, website information that it will give you. Uh, on the Google ads, if you're going to go down that route, on Facebook statistics, there's lots of tools out there to help you with your marketing. Keep tweaking, look at the keywords, look at the search engine optimization all the time. If something works, good. If it doesn't work, look at it. Why didn't it work? Okay, find that out. Now, paid ads, and I can see there's some uh, questions already about paid ads. Um, you can lose a lot of money quite quickly giving Mark Zuckerberg or Google money. Take your time, learn about it, read about it, watch videos about it, start with small amounts. Don't throw a hundred quid at it very quickly and just go and think, right, oh, my hundred quid's gone in two days. I started on a, a pound, I think about 50p a day is what I started at roughly, very, very slow. Once I realized I got my head around how Facebook ads and Google ads work, and I don't want to do a whole webinar on that because it would take me forever. And there's people that can speak about it a lot more, a lot better than I can on YouTube. Don't throw too much money at it. Take your time. Then once I started getting some good results from it, then I upped it a tiny bit. I don't think I ever paid more than about two pound a day, roughly. OK, and I didn't wouldn't do that for a whole year. I did that for sort of two months at a time, something like that. 
then word of mouth comes, your numbers comes up. And that, that's how it worked for me. OK, start small. Promise me you'll start small. Don't throw your money at Facebook ads. They will love to take it and it can just disappear. Look at advertise to people with money. Don't advertise to people without money. OK, as I said, do market yourself and work online alongside other jobs at the start. It'll make you a better teacher. It will also help you find your niche and it'll also just keep the money coming in steadily. You will get time wasters through marketing. OK, through your Facebook group, through your Facebook page, through your website, uh, through the YouTube comments, whatever it might be, you will get time wasters who want stuff for free or who just don't really help you at all. OK, that is part of it. Marketing. Learn how you're going to deal with those. Don't be too disappointed if you get a run of people wanting the free trial lessons quite often. OK, you will get time wasters. I would also recommend to you, and I've done one of these, do a marketing course. OK. Now, lots of local college, the local college near me offered a, a, a free one online recently. I did that one. I found it very useful, covered lots of different things, social media, search engine optimization, all of that. Or you can do marketing courses that are not that expensive. Check your local colleges. You might be able to do some where it's just sort of a distance one where it's not live. They can be quite cheap. Learn a bit more about it before you sort of go into it deeply. OK, thank you, guys. I'm just going to get back to some of the questions here. OK, uh, Diane, I'm fine. Thank you. Thank you for asking. I hope you're well as well. Sama in Iran. Hello, Vicky in Cyprus. Hello, Caitlin in Durham. Hello, Fee, Sharanti, Karen, Scotland, Gala, Montpellier, Jack in London. Hi. Joe in Cork, hello, hello, Leamington Spa, good, good. People have just built their website, good, good, good. Karen, hello, uh, 12.04. Are most online students high level students or are there some who are very low English? Good one, good question. Depends on your niche. Who are you advertising for? I would say that probably the majority of people that come to me are around about pre-intermediate, intermediate level. But that's part of my niche. I aim at people wanting to get quite a high score in a specific test. I don't aim at people who have quite a low score. Now, if you're a non-native speaker, this is the sort of thing. Aiming for low level English people is sort of thing that is a good niche. If you're an, if English is not your first language, can you market yourself to low level students near you so you can help them Learn English through also speaking your first language to them, because I believe now you're going to get companies that, that, that totally disagree with this. But I believe that having the same first language as some students in low levels is good. Karen, depends on your niche. Who do you want to teach? Who do you want to teach? Whoever you market to will put, be hopefully who you get coming to you. OK, Sarah. Hello. How do I collect payment? Interesting one. So PayPal mainly. Uh, however, 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 I do find that. Sorry, I just need to adjust my chair. I do find that what I do is go with the students who contact me. I because I'm in the UK. There seems to be more payment pros. Uh, providers open to me then for example I had a Kazakh student uh, about a year ago contact me uh, they didn't have PayPal they wanted to do it through some I think it was MoneyGram or something I think it was called works in the UK that was how they do it took the money I get them to pay the fees that's what I do however I've started to experiment a bit with cryptocurrency and just doing wallet exchanges with that. And that has been going OK for me. The problem is it's quite volatile, but I quite like doing it. You might want to look at the cryptocurrency, see how that might work for you. Um, if they're in the UK and a lot of my students come in the UK, I just do a, just a standard bank transfer. Does depend where the students are. Get them to find out how they can transfer some money. Give Offer them first PayPal. If that works, brilliant. I get them to pay the fees. Get them to do it through PayPal. If that doesn't work, ask them what might work in their country. See if it will then work in your country, Sarah, wherever you are. OK, 
Some lovely niches. Uh, Rani, Vicky, interesting. Sharanti, which platform works the best, in my opinion? Zoom. Stop there. Zoom works really well for me. I pay for the premium one because I like it. I just like having the, the extra things that come with it. Um, works really well for me. However, I have also taught through Skype. At the start, I taught through Skype before Zoom was big, and I taught through that with a shared document in Google. Um, worked really well. Yeah, uh, sharing my screen, Microsoft Word, that kind of thing. Uh, but Zoom, I think, works absolutely fine. Okay. Sarah, uh, where can you find out about the different exams for students? Uh, there's a lovely Wikipedia page about this. If you type into Google uh, English EFL exams or ESL, try them both, you'll get a whole on list of them. You'll be surprised how many there are out there. Okay. Uh, IELTS is one of the exams, Gerard, yes. However, um, there's a lot of people doing IELTS. Didn't work for me. Laurie, um, if you have a niche, like in my case, business, should you limit your website to that only? Or should you also put general English, which I can also teach quite obviously. Right. Um, right. I, first thing I would say, Laurie, is business is probably not niche enough. There's lots of business exams out there. Uh, business for writing, low level, high level business students. Uh, Business for sales, business for negotiations, business for marketing. There's lots of different types of business English. If you market yourself as the business English teacher, Laurie, I think at the start you're going to have a lot of competition. Now, you might already be up and running. Fair play to you. Well done. Business English is seen as good for people because people generally pay more for it. Companies might pay more for it. People might pay more for it because it will help them to get more money themselves, the students. So go for it. General English. I, so I would personally only do business English. I would only concentrate on business English. I would not put any general English stuff in there. There's tons and tons of videos for general English. Hundreds and dozens that get hardly any watched, hardly watched on YouTube, but get, but are really good, I think. Unfortunately, the reason why I don't like YouTube so much is because I'm not the most photogenic of people. And there are websites out there and there are videos out there with people, generally pretty girls or very handsome blokes. And a lot of what they say is grammatically wrong. A lot of what they teach is terrible, but because they look pretty good, people love them. So I would not, if I was you, Laurie, now Laurie, you might be the most photogenic person in the world i don't know but i would not try and compete against those ones that have already got loads of money i'm trying to dig myself out of a hole here you know um but i would not go after those i would just do business english if i was you okay uh sharanti uh how does one advertise on facebook or instagram uh one advertises i sound like the queen then uh, what advertises on Facebook through Facebook ads, uh, which there are lots of videos about. There are lots of websites, introduction to Facebook ads. There are also lots of um, stuff actually on Facebook website to help you out with that kind of thing. Facebook, Instagram owned same bloke. So they are linked together quite well. So you can sort of link them. There are software. There are bits that you can help you to do them both at the same time. OK. Uh, Google it, Sharanti, how to get started on with Facebook ads. Don't spend too much money. OK, uh, Rani, you're 63. Help. I'm not sure I can, Rani. Um, listen, uh, look, older, I can see people going, oh, no, I'm old, I'm old, I'm old, I'm old. What, what, what do you mean you're old? Stu some students like that. There are parts of the world where an old teacher is seen as much better than a young, well-qualified, enthusiastic teacher. I have worked in those countries when I was in my 20s and people would tell me, you can't be a teacher, you're too young. You're never too old to be a teacher, I think. Uh, Henry, you're moving to Jamaica. There's no need to rub it in, Henry. All right, OK. But it's not as nice as this rain shower outside in Belfast today. Philip. Uh, you can pay a company to get your website higher up on Google search, can't you? Uh, your, s s your sale football club, what's that about? Um, uh, right, you can pay a company to get your website. Yes, you can. I've never done that. 
I taught myself it. I enjoy teaching myself it. I also don't trust a lot of the people on the internet who want to take your money. I get a lot of people advertising, sorry, a lot of people emailing me um, from Asia saying they can improve on my search engine optimization if, they, if I just give them my password to my website. I'm not going to do that. Teach yourself, Philip. Long term, it's definitely going to be better for you. Um, Vicky, any advice on how to make the most of Facebook and LinkedIn? Yeah, Facebook, be active. That's my most of my most important advice with Facebook is be active. Just keep it going. Keep it, um, uh, you know, don't spend too much on the ads, but do look into ads. Ads can help have a page, have a group, keep people talking, get the comments going, keep the interactions going in it as much as you can. Devote about half an hour a day, something like that, to, to replying to people, that kind of thing. Get into other groups talking about it. So you can go in yourself as Vicky and say, oh, do you know what? I found this lovely group. And then you point to your group, something like that. Get yourself active. Get your word out there on Facebook. LinkedIn, never used. So have I got any advice? No. Sorry, Vicky. Never used it myself. I do see videos where people talk about how good it is. I've never used it. Sorry, Vicky. Uh, John, you're in Lisbon, just down the road. I hope everything's OK about in Lisbon today. Philip, you wanted to ask Carl about how much more difficult now UK is at the EU. If it's if I'm looking at teaching in EU countries like France, how much more difficult will this make it or barriers on my face? Do some issues sort of visa out? And what type of visa would this like to be classed as? Thanks, Carl, again. Uh, right. I think at the moment it's still, believe it or not, relatively early days to be talking about where you want to work in the EU. Um, it, I, I, I do know of people who have just started working in Spain recently. I think what you need to do, if I was you, I would think of a country where you want to work, then I would contact the schools directly and see if they will help you with the visa costs. Now, they might get you on some long-term contracts, that kind of thing. It's difficult. It has made it definitely more difficult for people without dual nationality with a European country to get working in Europe. Brexit. Um, but I still think it hasn't quite sorted itself out all properly and it might change in the future is my hunch. OK, the problem with Europe is you get a, there's a lot of people, a lot of not just, for example, to teach English, you've got Irish people in Europe teaching. You've also got like really good German pe German teachers, English teachers who are German teaching in Spain and in Italy and that kind of thing. So there's quite a bit of competition in Europe. It has made it more difficult. OK, I'm glad the advice is good. Uh, Uniworld City G Gaon. Interesting name. How do you market advanced business English to corporates, working professionals, please? So first thing you've got to do is find out where in the uh, Internet do these advanced business English corporate people hang out? I'm guessing LinkedIn. You sound like a perfect person to get involved with LinkedIn. Then see if you can work it out like that. What you need to do is market Find is explain to them in your marketing how your advanced business English will help them. Will it help them to sell more products? Will it help them to get a promotion? Will it help them to um, buy more products? Whatever it is that their job is. Do something that will help them professionally to improve their life and get their marketing on that. Now, advanced business English is, again, quite a big niche. Can you narrow it down a bit more, Mr. or Mrs. Uniworld City Gigaeon? That's what I would say to you. Uh, my English bubble. Hello. How do you deal with seasonal decrease of clients? Uh, so one of the reasons is a good good point. So um, one of the, re the things that I do is I have different jobs because I have some work for one examining company, which is massive over the summer. And a lot of my English teaching sort of falls down in the summer. I generally prepare people who are going to go to study at university. So once they're at the university at the start of the term, it doesn't work so well. So I get other work from other companies. That's why I think having a broad range of different companies and income streams helps you there. 
Miss English Bubble. Good luck with it. Um, Joe, you have two possible niches. You speak Spanish and you're a professional writer. Any specific ideas on how you could explain? Yep. You could be Joe McGowan, the uh, low level writing teacher. Spanish speakers. Spanish, obviously, a big market. You're not just marketing yourself to Spain. You've got Argentina, uh, Mexico, that kind of thing. So you, I would go down, if you enjoy writing, if you enjoy teaching writing, I would look about being a teacher to pass an exam in writing or improve academic writing or generally improve email skills, something like that. You might even go down the route of uh, helping people who want to become a novelist. Go down that one. Uh, good. Thank you, everyone, for the comments. Um, uh, some people saying I am quite photogenic, maybe because of my beard today. I don't know. Uh, Anos, hello. Uh, how can you find your students? Anos, I'd go for a walk. Can you get them? Are they there? Where, where are they right now? I don't know. Anos, is, are you in a big building? Be careful, Anos. Uh, how do you find students to go to Anos TV? Uh, just have a look at, look at the, uh, PowerPoint I just did. Do those kind of things, all right? Um, I think you've got to have your good niche, Anos TV. I hope it works out for you. Um, or if they're just in the corridor, invite them in. Uh, Lee, older means more experience, it does. Uh, <laughs> John, do, do you detect a Leicester, from Leicester? I can't even say it. No, I, I, I'm not from Leicester. Are you transparent about the accent you teach with? Do you ever alter your accent in teaching to more general? Yes. When I talk with my mates, I talk a bit like this because I'm from London and I, so I talk a bit like this. How you doing, mate? You all right? Yeah, good to see you. You're right. This is my London accent. I talk to my mates when I go down the pub like this with my London mates. However, when I teach in the classroom, I have more of a general English, but sometimes my lack of H's and TH's come out and I've been in parts around the world where I've had students tell me that I don't speak properly because the Queen would never do that. I think every teacher I know adapts their voice to teach by making their voice louder or even quieter, giving it more expression. I think you need to have a teaching voice. And it's definitely, I'm definitely not from Leicester. Um, your English bubble. Do I have any good teacher communities in the UK? Yeah, I first one I would join would be our group. So if you go onto Facebook and find TEFL org group, join that. Uh, really helpful. Then the other thing you might want to do is sort of look at the British Council websites, that kind of thing. Then you might even want to go down the route of uh, looking at the professional bodies such as Barleap, B-A-L-E-A-P, uh, for academic English, for example. Um, what's the other one, the big one, oh, which I've totally forgotten about? Google professional bodies teaching EFL professionals. Twitter also is very good there's like a live chat every wednesday on twitter about people who are talking about a theme of the week in tefl okay uh twitter um some advice there to i think it was philip about how to get to europe i'm coming to the end of the webinar in a minute guys so please just um if you've got any questions please put them in um, have I covered them all? I should have. Sorry, I should have said Erin is man is um, on the chat today. Erin, uh, thank you very much for any help you've put in there. Um, I think that might be all the questions. So listen, marketing takes a while. I do recommend you look on our website. I'm just going to get on to it just to show you. Um, Tefl org let me just get that up on the screen so i can help you with that um we have a section um about their blog okay erin i don't know if you want to make it even bigger just get rid of me just for a second is that possible yes perfect thank you if you click on the blog section um uh let me just click on that um i didn't click properly uh, there's lots of different information there on lots of different posts about um, lots of different things about EFL. OK, so I really, really recommend you go there. Now, for example, if you want to uh, teach about online teaching, 
put that into the search bit there and then you will get lots of stuff that comes up about online teaching okay uh how to find your first job online companies platforms um non-native speakers lots of stuff like that guide to teaching english online all that kind of thing we've got loads of lovely pages and work on there to help you we also have a list of accredited courses that we have um which we really recommend you doing something like this we'll definitely once you've got this certificate even if you're going to go teach online for yourself get yourself a certificate get yourself the basics but then there's also stuff here about how to teach english online the better an English teacher you are, the better your marketing will be because you'll feel more confident, that kind of thing. Really recommend you go on that and have a look around tfl.org. We also have a chat with us function down there. You click on that, you can send us a message, we'll get back to you. Also on our Facebook page, we can get back to you if you've got any questions. Um, and we've got loads of other videos that we've also done previously on there as well. So um, really recommend you have a look around that website and have a look around our Facebook and YouTube page as, as well. OK, um, it doesn't it takes a while to get going and to have your own income from yourself coming in, either online or locally. So I, it can be done. But don't think it's going to happen in two months, three months. In my opinion, it takes about sort of six to 12 months to get your marketing up and running, to get yourself your website nice and to get everything tweaked properly and then to get students coming in constantly. Does depend also how much money you're willing to earn. If you I've, I've seen a question there about how much money does it take? Um, how much money can you earn? It's, it's difficult because it depends where you are in the world. London need quite a bit of money coming in. Somebody who's in Thailand might need less money coming in. So it does sort of depend on that who your marketing goes down. Um, thank you very much, everyone, for listening and watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, please say that you enjoyed the video. If you didn't enjoy it, please say that you didn't enjoy it and why. Um, go back and look at some of our videos. And I hope you have a very nice weekend. Bye, bye, bye.